In this video, I am going to photograph two buildings in New York that were built about 90 years apart. So I'll do some architectural photography, then I'll show you how I process one of the images in Photoshop. If you do like this video, it really helps if you give me a like, thumbs up. Uh, and if you want to see more of this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Let's get started. I made my way into New York City to do some architectural photography. I was doing some research last night just on Google Maps and uh, as I was exploring parts of New York City I came across this building on the computer and I figured I would actually drive into the city and check it out. I've never shot this building before. I probably walked by it one time but uh, it's pretty cool. I got to set up. Well, I got my camera on a tripod. Probably don't need the tripod because it's pretty bright out and I'm not doing a long exposure, but I brought the tripod anyway, so I put it up there. So I am perched somewhat precariously on the divider uh, on Park Avenue. This is Park Avenue South, uh, but uh, it's a good spot to shoot from a vantage standpoint, but I just don't want to step out into the street either way. It's pretty narrow. Well, I am using a wide angle lens, so I'm going to catch some of these distractions, you know, here and probably this building, but I'll get rid of those in post. My architectural work, I tend to heavily Photoshop anyway, and so uh, it should be pretty easy. Well, I'm using my wide-angle lens. I got my 16 to 35 millimeter lens out there and uh, I'm shooting an f10 to try to get a fair amount of focus. That's kind of the sweet spot for this lens because you're usually pretty sharp. Uh, again, I'm, I'm using 1 50th of a second so the tripod's really not necessary. I was hoping to get some detail in the clouds and maybe capture some cloud movement with a, um, a long exposure but that is definitely not going to happen this morning. It's just a steel gray sort of sky. Well, I cross the street to shoot really straight up on this building. It is actually starting to snow a little bit, just a little flurry. So I just have to be careful my lens doesn't get too, uh, too wet, but um, really cool perspective of this building. Well, I think I got some good shots of that building. I'm going to walk about uh, six blocks north, three blocks west, and shoot a much older skyscraper. I am standing across the street from the Empire State Building. You can see it in back of me there. This is a 90 year old building. That was the tallest building in New York from when it was built until about the mid 70s when they built the World Trade Center. It is a classic New York location. I'm gonna try to get some quick shots of it and uh, see what I can create. I walk 
to around the corner onto 34th Street to get this building from a different angle. It's actually pretty cool from this angle too. I was hoping to kind of lean up against a glass window and get a reflection, but I'm only getting kind of a part of a reflection. It's not quite working, but again, pretty cool building to shoot. I'm going to head back, get these on the computer, take a look at them. Uh, hey, if you like this video, make sure you give me a like, thumbs up. Uh, and if you want to see more of this content, you should subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. And until next time. What I want to do now is show you how I turned this image into this image in Photoshop. I've already done a number of things in Lightroom. I converted to black and white, I pulled up some of the shadows, pulled down some of the highlights, added a touch of clarity, but honestly didn't do too much. In Photoshop, I have already made really just three selections. I selected the sky, and I selected parts of that overhang on the lower part of the image. Um, and I, I did that by using the polygonal lasso tool. These were all straight lines, so it was relatively simple. I saved the selections by just hitting select, save selection, and putting a name on it. First thing I want to do is make a copy of the background layer. So on a Mac, I can hit Command J as a shortcut. It will do that. The next thing I want to do is really remove all the distractions other than the building. And that means anything in the sky. And I want to create a very blank palette. And so what I'm going to do is select the sky. So I hit load selection. I hit sky. And there's many ways of doing this. What I'm going to do is use a solid color adjustment layer. And I want to keep it black and white. And so I'm going to pull down until I get to a tone that I like. I don't want to be fully black. It looks kind of fake. But I want a, just a very soft, dark sky, something like that. I hit OK. And so you can see already the difference, that versus that. The eye is really drawn to the building itself. Next thing I want to do is I want to add more contrast in the building. And so what I can do is I can select the sky again. Uh, and then I want to choose the building, so I just hit inverse. I hit select, inverse. This will select everything but the sky, which in this case is the building. And to add contrast, I'll use a curves adjustment layer, uh, you know, a typical S curve. So pull down on the shadows, pull up on the brighter areas, and you get this really nice contrast. And you play with it a little bit, but here's the before, here's the after. Next thing I want to do is I want to uh, accentuate the overhang a little bit uh, by brightening it up. And so what I'll do is I will go to the selection I've already made, and I chose two different selections. Uh, the left strip, uh, which is the left part of this overhang, I'll choose a curves adjustment layer and pull up. And you can see that whole part of the selection becomes brighter. It's a little flat. I like to add some movement, some gradient to it. And so I will reselect it, choose my gradient tool. The foreground color will be white. And pulling over from the right, you get this nice gradient. And again, you can play with a little bit. Uh, so here's the for, here's the after. I'll do the same thing on the right side. I'm going to deselect this area by hitting Command D. I'm going to go to selection, load selection. I will choose the right strip. I'll go to a curves adjustment layer and pull up. So that will brighten up the selection. I will reselect it. I got my gradient tool selected and pull in from the center. And you get this nice movement and gradient. So you could see here's before. And just by adding that brightness at that corner, uh, it really does um, accentuate the overhang. 
The last thing I want to do is I want to darken the bottom half of the building, but not the overhang. And so here, here's a little lesson on making selections. So I'm going to select the uh, sky. I'll invert it to select the building. Now I want to have this building selected, but not the overhangs. And so what I can do is I can load a selection, for example, left strip, and then down below it says subtract from selection. I'm going to click on that and you'll see the marching ants around there because it's not selected. And then I'll do the same thing, load selection, right strip, subtract from selection. So now if I make a change, it will affect the building but not the strip. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll go to my curves adjustment layer. I'm going to darken uh, the selection. So it's darkening the whole building but not the overhang. And then I will reselect it. I'll go back to my gradient tool. I'm going to pull up from the bottom. And you can see here's the before, here's the after. I've just darkened the bottom part of the, um, of the building without the overhangs. In fact, they pop more and I can pull down a little bit more. I can deselect by hitting Command D. And so that gives you a sense of the process I went through. I did one last thing. And that was the sky. You can see on the right side of the building, it's a bit brighter. And I want to reflect that in the sky as well. So I'm going to select the sky, uh, which I've, again, I've made that selection already. Um, I'm going to a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to pull up, and that's going to brighten the entire selection. But I want a gradient. I want the right side of the sky to be brighter. And so I will reselect. I've got my gradient tool selected. I'm going to pull over from the right. And you will see you get that nice gradient. Now, something that came up, which does not look great, and that is the banding. If you look closely, you'll see banding, especially on the right side. There's a number of ways of getting, of getting rid of banding. Um, I'm going to show you one way that I use, and that's adding a little bit of noise. The first thing I want to do is I want to get all of these uh, layers on one layer where I can work on it. I'm going to hit Command Option uh, Shift E and that puts everything on this one layer. I then want to select the sky so load selection sky. I'm going to go to filter noise and add noise and all I'm doing is adding a minute amount of noise, but you can see what happens. If I take away the, let me move this over. If I take away the preview, you can see the banding. By just adding a little bit of noise, and it doesn't really detract from the image much, it helps get rid of that, uh, get rid of the banding. And that's very, very successful. I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect. And that's the final image. I hope you enjoyed this. If you, if you did, you can give me a, a thumbs up, that always helps. And if you want to see more of these tutorials, uh, just make sure you subscribe to the channel. And until next time.